Good morning, Metalheads Internet, and cheers, because it is June! It is summer! Summer is here, everyone! It's here! Almost! More importantly, it's an Albums I Missed video, and you all know the drill by now. This is where I look at a variety of albums uh, that I didn't get to talk about in May. Either I didn't get the time to talk about it, or I didn't feel like there was anything I could add to the conversation at the actual time it was released, or I just didn't really want to, frankly, and I'm just doing it here to get some of you to shut the fuck up. That sounds cruel, but it's the God's honest fucking truth. Because y'all are persistent as fuck sometimes. I admire it, mind you. It's... I do. Genuinely. That being said, though, I don't feel like I actually missed anything that important or extraordinary in May, because we already talked about a lot of important and extraordinary music. We got some really great underground old-school death metal from some of the heroes of underground old-school death metal. Take, for instance, Paradox from Nocturnus AD, a continuation of uh, the classic 90s uh, early tech death band uh, Nocturnus. And we even got the first album from Possessed in 33 fucking years, Revelations of Oblivion, which is just as much as a ripper as you would expect. I even said in my review that it was better than Seven Churches, and guess what? I still stand by that. We also got a couple Album of the Year contenders, Florida Man with their album Tropical Depression, and the absolute masterpiece that is Weeping Choir from Full of Hell, and a bunch of other fun goodies along the way, you know, a pretty solid Deaf Angel record, a mostly solid Flesh God Apocalypse record, uh, Ringworm put out a great record, Amon Amarf put out a half-decent record, it's been a pretty good month for May. But of course, even though we talked about so much music, there's also still so much that we miss, so I'm not gonna waste any more time, let's get right into it. Here are all the albums that I feel that I missed in May 2019. Feel free to chime in with your own albums that you feel that I missed at the end of the video and in the comments section. First one I want to talk about, Winter Ethereal by Arch Mateos, released May 10th via Metal Blade Records. Just as the name suggests, this is a collaborative record between John Arch and Jim Mateos, uh, former bandmates in Fate's Warning. Jim is still currently in Fate's Warning, may I add, but John's been out of the picture for a while, if I'm not mistaken. What's really interesting, too, is that it's not just the main guys. The backing band is also made up of former members of Fate's Warning, as well as gentlemen who have collectively played with the likes of Armored Saint, Rob Halford, Sebastian Bach. Definitely a group of talented individuals here, and definitely an exciting project if you're a fan of older Fate's Warning, which this very much falls in line with. It's very epic and dramatic, and it gets a little cheesy at times, but Everything pulls together really nicely. The musicianship is fantastic. Jim Mateos is probably one of the most underrated songwriters in all of heavy metal. The guy can play. The guy can jam. You know, he creates really interesting compositions and riffs. And it's always a really dynamic and engaging listen when you've got him at the helm. And John Arch is just a fantastic fucking vocalist. The guy brings it all across this record. I almost did review this one, to be honest. But then I had to make room for Florida, man. So... C'est la vie. But nonetheless, it's an album I really enjoyed. Had I reviewed it, I might have given a 4 out of 5, even leaning towards a 4.5. It's a seriously solid and enjoyable record. Even if sometimes it does lean into the trappings of progressive metal, it's nonetheless an exhilarating and exciting listen. Next up, Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terror Vortex from Glory Hammer, released May 31st via Napalm Records. Where do I fucking start with this band? Um... Glory Hammer is fucking batshit insane. Glory Hammer is like the ultimate power metal smorgasbord. I mean, everything you think of when it comes to power metal. The musicianship, the songwriting, the aesthetic, the, the fucking unicorns and knights and the medieval shit. It's all here and it's been multiplied by 80 fucking million. Like, Arjun Mateus was sometimes a little cheesy and overdramatic and it pulled through. This is intentionally... Insanely cheesy, intentionally, insanely overdramatic, and it doesn't even care if you think it pulls through because it's going to keep on charging nonetheless. It's an album so abhorrently ridiculous that there's not really much of a point in really going into the fine details of it. There's, there's really only one thing you need to ask yourself before going into this album. Do you like power metal? If the answer is yes, holy shit. The excessive nonsense of this record is gonna, it's, it's gonna rock your goddamn world. However, if you don't like power metal, and I mean if you really don't fucking like it, like you wouldn't listen to power metal on the happiest day of your life because it would derail that day, 
then holy flying fucking shit, stay away from this album. Really not sure what else to say about this album. It is essentially a junk food infused drug rush. It's, it's cocaine in your Baconator, but with nights. I don't know. Next up, Gastier, Ghosts Invited, the debut album from Gaul's World. Or Gaul's Word, I guess. I don't know. It's a new record from Gaul. I'll spare you the biography, but for those of you unaware, he's one of the most provocative and infamous names in all of black metal. The former lead singer for Godseed and Gorgoroth. And this is his latest project, which does see him trying to stray away from black metal in some aspects. Unfortunately, it falls kind of flat in the songwriting department. It's by no means incompetent or even that bad, but it's just kind of flat and unexciting. For me, at least. Keep in mind that modern black metal is very hit and miss for me, which is part of why I didn't review this. The other part knowing that I would get more views with Dark Throne, so, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's definitely interesting to explore, especially because Gaul is such a weird and fascinating man, but... If it weren't for that aspect, I may not have even checked this album out at all. Take from that what you will, I suppose. Next up, the self-titled album from doom metal legend St. Vitus, released May 17th via Season of Mist. Yeah, I can sum up this album in one word. BORING! The band hasn't put out a lot of material in the last decade, and what they have put out has been pretty unspectacular, pretty unengaging and kind of generic and, and bloated. And this album isn't really much different. It's a lot of tried and true ideas being repeated over and over over the course of an entire record. Um, I know some people that have kind of liked it. I uh, Sarah Ann from uh, Banger TV and also lead vocalist of Smolder, she reviewed it on Overkill Reviews and she seemed to really like it. I don't know. But yeah, the general consensus is that this record is boring and just not worth your time, which is entirely the reason why I did not review it. Who knows, maybe if you're super into St. Vitus you'll have some fun, but I would just recommend looking at the older records. Next up, an EP from Vader entitled Thy Messenger, released May 31st via Nuclear Blast Records. Yeah, I just frankly didn't really have much to say about this record, which isn't to say it's bad, it's actually a really enjoyable, bite-sized package of death metal. But there's no point really digging into the album's inner grooves and what makes it tick because you kind of already know what you're getting into before you even press play. It's fucking Vader. Like, it's tight fucking death metal. What, what more do you need to know? So have at it. It's a cool, fun, short little record, and it's exactly that. I, I literally have nothing else to say. This is why I didn't review it. Next up, Abiogenesis, a coming into existence, a massive compilation record from Origin, released May 3rd, 2019. This is a very interesting album. This is Origin collecting and even re-recording some of their oldest tracks. As far as I can tell, some of these go back as far as 1991. That's crazy! I had no idea Origin had even been around that long. Holy fuck! Congratulations are in order, I suppose! I had no idea! I guess with that in mind, it goes without saying that I haven't heard a lot of these tracks before, and it was really exciting to dig into these older tracks and to hear such brutal fucking death metal in a time where I don't feel like death metal was even quite this brutal and proficient yet. Mind you, that might just be because some of this is re-recorded and remixed, but nonetheless, the brutality still comes through in the songwriting rather than the mix and the musicianship. That's impressive, especially for a death metal band of that time. Now, all things considered, they are still Origin. I mean, this is another band that you kind of know what you're getting into before you even press play, or at least you should. But that being said, I honestly couldn't think of a better introductory album for someone who really wanted to get into a band, because this kind of covers literally everything, and it's got flashes of all kinds of death metal from all these different eras, while still being Origin, while still showcasing what they do best, without straying too far from the path. And it's a great way for veterans to get back into this material as well, especially when you consider that this is probably the first time some people have even heard this, these tracks, even if you are a diehard fan. I mean, some of these tracks stretch pretty far back. So I highly recommend this. It's a good collection of Death Metal History. Check it out. Next up, High in the Saddle from Texas Hippie Coalition, released May 31st via Entertainment One Music. 
I know I've heard these guys before somewhere. I think I may have even seen them on the Mayhem Festival in 2015. As far as this album is concerned, it's fine. This is pretty meat and potatoes kind of biker rock with a bit of a southern attitude and classic rock influence. Kind of basic, not really that exciting or original, but it's fun. It's laid back, you know, it's something my dad would really uh, enjoy listening to while riding on his bike and shit like that. They, it ain't gonna melt anyone's faces off, but if by some chance you're hosting a barbecue in the near future with your family, and they're not super into like Napalm Def and Obituary and shit, but you still kinda wanna play something a little heavy just so that you don't, you know, die, then this'll do just fine. This'll do. It's okay. It's fine. Next up, Subtle from Lopan, released March 17th via Aqualam Records. This is the band's fifth album. I'm not really that familiar with their work, but I have heard of them before. I know that they're pretty popular in the world of stoner rock and stoner metal. And just saying the name of that genre gives you a pretty clear idea as to what we're getting into here. We're talking beefy riffs, we're talking weird vocals, we're talking some subtle, strong melodies, no pun intended and generally a pretty laid-back experience. Yeah, that's pretty much what we get, but I'm really impressed at how good Lopan are at writing really big, soaring melodies and pairing them with these really great, fuzzy, but still crushing riffs. It's an interesting dynamic that even kind of harkens to epic doom in a sense, and I like that. It's just different enough. It's not gonna win any awards or anything, but you know, could be a hell of a lot worse. Um, if you are by chance a stoner, it's also a great record to stone out to. I'm not. I'm a drinker as you can already tell. But even if you're not a smoker, like I said, still some cool riffs and cool melodies to sink your teeth into. So I'd give it a shot. Cool record. Next up, Dankosaurus by Hunt the Dinosaur, an album sent to me by uh, Trevor Burns here on YouTube, a longtime viewer of The Metal Meltdown. And um... I fucking hate you, Trevor Burns. Why did you send this album my way? Why? My day was going perfectly fine and you sent this album to me. Shame on you. Okay, that's a little harsh. I don't actually hate you, Trevor. But I do hate this album. This, this fucking album. God fucking damn it. It's so needlessly fucking edgy. It feels the need to prove how hip and cool and edgy it is every fucking moment. We're not just, we don't just write deathcore, we're, we're dank, bro, smoke weed, blaze it, ho, we're gonna make the album Dankosaurus, ho, 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 bro, whoa, fuck you, get this edgy fucking shit out of my face. Yeah, it's fucking edgy ass modern deathcore, if you like Attila or you can stomach them, then I guess you will like and or stomach this, but I didn't. Next up, Ascension from Paladin, released May 17th via Prosthetic Records. Now we're getting into my kind of shit here. We got some really cool, exciting, vibrant, super colorful thrash metal from a young band, and they got a lot of power metal influence in the sound, a lot of speed metal influence, and it's wild and fast and exhilarating, and it's just a super fun experience. Kind of feels like the meeting point between a band like Holy Grail and maybe a band like Striker. You know, it's it's got that old school flavor, it's fast, it's menacing, it's pretty sharp on its toes. The vocalist on here, Taylor Washington, is really fucking great too. He brings in a lot of other influences to the table. You know, at times he sounds like Rhodey Walker from Protest the Hero. At times he brings to mind Fabuleon of Rhapsody. Other times he even sounds like uh, Chance Garnet from Skeleton Witch, like super fierce and in your fucking face. I do wish the record was a little bit more creative in some aspects, especially when it's clearly pushing so hard for such a unique and dynamic sound, but it is nonetheless a super fun and engaging listen. Next up, Under the Witching Cross from Bewitcher, released May 10th via Shadow Kingdom Records. God, another record right up my alley. This super old school kind of 80s black thrash metal record in the vein of like Venom with a little bit of Exodus and a little bit of super early Metallica. A lot of rough edges, a lot of sharp riffs, a lot of cool imagery within the lyrics and of course that album cover as well. Heart of Diana, a common guest here in the Metal Meltdown and Intoxicated Gaming, also was a big fan of this record. She even ended up buying it and she got it on vinyl 
and then send it to me, and now I just have it at my place, so I've come to enjoy it quite frequently. Much like Paladin, I also wish this band was more creative in some aspects, but also much like Paladin, it's still a pretty fun and invigorating listen. Highly recommend this if you're looking for a dose of thrash metal goodness with a pinch of first wave black metal. Next up, Burn the Night from Riot City released May 17th via No Remorse. While bands like Paladin and Bewitcher have old school heavy metal influence in their sound coupled with a lot of other ideas, Riot City is very strictly in love with the motherfucking 80s. The music, the lyrics, the aesthetic, the vibe, even the album cover, this feels very much ripped out of the 80s with a very modern sheen, but very little, if none, modern influence. If this is influenced by modern music, it's only by bands that are also so heavily influenced by older music. Take, for instance, White Wizard, for instance. It's a sharp record, it's a short record, it is kind of meat and potatoes, but it doesn't really want to be much else. It's definitely not trying to be much else. If you're just looking for a good throwback 80s metal album, this will definitely do it. It's got a lot of really great anthems on it. It's got a lot of uh, great guitar work, a lot of great vocals on here. If this album were a movie, it would be Commando. Not the brightest crown in the box, but a fun time nonetheless. Next up, Emergence from Dreadnought released May 10th via Profound Lore Records. It took me a little while to really get into this record, which is part of why I didn't review it when it initially came out. It's a record that does demand a little bit more of your patience, a little bit more of your time, but the good news is, is once you really sit down and take a listen to it and really absorb everything that hap that is happening, it becomes really engrossing, really enticing, really dynamic. It does have some pacing issues that really hurt the record in my opinion. Three of the tracks on here extend past 10 minutes and it's not necessary at all. But it's a very interesting record nonetheless. It combines black metal and death metal and avant-garde in a really interesting fashion. It's very expressive and colorful and dynamic and engaging. I believe this is their third album. I'm not really familiar with their other records, but I am curious to check them out and see how this band has evolved because I think that Dreadnought are playing around with a lot of cool ideas and I'd like to see them expand on them because I think with a little bit more time and care and attention, Dreadnought could really have a fucking killer record on their hands in the future. I'm not trying to say this is a bad record because it really isn't. I actually managed to really enjoy it despite its pacing issues and despite how challenging it is, but those are issues we need to highlight nonetheless. And I think these are things that hold the band back from achieving pure greatness. Definitely going to keep an eye on these guys though. I'm very excited what they continue to do in the future. And finally, Hammer of Justice by Thor, which was actually released at the very end of April. I know, that doesn't count. We're here to talk about music in May. But I'm going to make an exception for a couple of reasons. One, they're local. You know me. I, I Anything from Toronto, I'm immediately going to highlight. And two, I actually really wanted to review this album, and I had no idea when it was coming out. I assumed it was coming out in the summer, so I literally missed the release date by a month, by pure accident. And the reason why I wanted to review this album is not only because they're from Toronto, but apparently, according to some people, these are underground metal legends in Toronto. Like, apparently they're a super important name in Toronto's hard rock and heavy metal scene. Apparently, so important that they've had a documentary made about them about 10 years ago. They got another documentary coming out sometime this summer. In fact, now that I think about it, the premiere is here in Toronto for that second documentary. And, get this, Mayor John Tory is going to give this fucker the key to the city. What? I don't even know who these people are and they're getting the key to the city? Needless to say, I was very excited to see what all the buzz was about. I even considered buying tickets to the premiere of this fucking documentary, which again is being premiered here in Toronto at an actual movie theater, not some dinky little shed. And god damn was I disappointed to hear the whole fucking album. Oh my lord. Unfortunately, and to an extent unsurprisingly, it turned out to be a bunch of really bland, generic meat and potatoes metal. But the biggest problem was is how horribly it was fucking mixed. How bad the sound mix is and just how bad everything's arranged. 
Like, just listen to the song Warp 5000, and you'll understand every problem I have with this album. It's redundant, it's sloppy, definitely, definitely overhyped. If you're looking for some great old-school Toronto hard rock and heavy metal, go listen to Anvil, okay? Anvil are... are there, there wouldn't be Metallica and Guns N' Roses and Slayer without Anvil. Those bands have admitted that themselves. Go listen to Anvil. Fuck, if, if Thor can get the key to the city, how come I don't have the key to the city? What the fuck, guys? Starting a new petition right now to get Metal Meltdown to the key to the city. I'm only half joking, I kind of want to do this petition now. I don't know, maybe if you're like 60 years old and your favorite album is Back in Black by ACDC, then maybe you'll have fun with this. I don't know. Who fucking cares? Whatever. And that's it! We're at the end! These are all the albums that I wanted to talk about. These are all the albums that I feel that I missed in the month of May. Obviously, if you have albums that you would like to talk about, you feel that I missed, now's the time to do it. Feel free to comment. Probably won't review them, but I probably would listen to them. I'm usually pretty honest when I say stuff like that. Usually, mind you. I mean, who knows? I could just be saying shit because I've been drinking a lot of this Georgian Bay tropical gin shit. Fuck, this is good. I'm buying 80,000 more of those. So yeah, that's it for the Metal Meltdown. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. All that fucking fun shit. You have yourself a fantastic fucking day. Ah. Fuck yeah.